Hello and welcome to the fourth video of our series where we're going to look into um, the start of our grasshopper definition and how to create uh, a series of permutations for each of our element to be later on used for uh, the marching cubes algorithm. Um, before I begin showing you the grasshopper stuff, uh, first of all I'm going to just say that um, my suggestion would be for you to check out uh, these two tutorials uh, before you begin. The 2D Game of Life and 2.5D Game of Life. Uh, these two tutorials fit in quite well between um, the newest, uh, like the, the, the third uh, video of the series and this one that I'm recording right now. Um, once you have uh, looked through these two tutorials, uh, you will be able to generate this point cloud which doesn't look like much but uh, trust me there's uh, quite quite a technique to it um, and the, that point cloud is going to be used as our uh, guiding uh, geometry for marching cubes algorithm uh, for now I'll just explain why do we need permutations in the first place um, and what I mean by permutations it's <clears throat> right now let's let's take element one as an example right and let me just make a copy of it um, this is how during the marching cubes algorithm how um, the, the, the script will perform if it sees only one point touching a single corner of a voxel right um, and here what we have modeled out is just you can see this is just the element type one and there's no type that is like it. Um, so here we have modeled it out as if uh, only the bottom uh, left corner uh, closer to us um, has the point. So naturally the, uh, the polygon is created here. But what happens if you have, um, let me just move it. What if it happens if you have a point on this side of the voxel, right? There's no um, library type element uh, that fits um, the, the, this, this kind of thing, which means that we still need to use element type one. It's just that it's going to be either a rotated or mirrored version uh, of element type one, like that. Right. And um, speaking of rotating or mirroring, it really doesn't um, doesn't matter which which uh, type of a approach you choose. Uh, but what matters is um, that you have all possible variations on how this element with this single point can tile within this voxel. And naturally, uh, since we're only dealing with a single point, right? You have uh, four, four more, eight variations, variations in total. Um, let me give you an example. Um, well, th this point cloud is a bit too heavy, so I'll just quickly make, make just a point cloud consisting of two points. So let me just, first of all, create this kind of voxelized world, so to say, like that. Something very simple. Um, so our voxel world consists of three by two by two voxels, right? So 12, I, I, I believe, yes, 12 voxels in total. And let's say here and here, we have two points, right? And we want to wrap those points around um, with a, a mesh, right? So we, we want to use a marching cubes algorithm. The way it would work is we would go through every single voxel and we would check, you know, what, what kind of condition does it have? So I just copied out this voxel with a point that's touching it, right? So it's a single point uh, con con touching condition, uh, which means we use element type one, right? So we need to use this one. So let me just move it into place like that but the problem now is that it's not really you know on the spot 
uh, which means that actually it should be <clears throat> wait I'm, I'm, I'm doing it wrong all wrong um, we mirror it mirror three point mirror it like that then we rotate it like that and we move it in place like that okay so uh, for this particular voxel this type of element one uh, fits so I just move it in place right and then honestly I won't be doing it for every single voxel here I will be just um, quickly uh, wrapping everything around with, with uh, element type 1 as it is. So I'll just mirror it to the other side. Oops. Mirror it to the other side like that. <clears throat> and the reason I'm, I'm mirroring it be is because if I check this voxel, move it out, you can see it. It's, it's like a mirrored version of the previous one, right? Uh, so I have that, and this is a um, symmetric, um, somewhat of a symmetric structure. So I can mirror again three points this time, mirror them upwards. So you can see that this point on one end, it's being wrapped by four element type ones, right? Meaning that since it's symmetric, this point right here will be wrapped on the other end with all like these four element type ones, well rather a mirrored version of them like that right and then we have uh, this voxel for instance and this point together with this point right let me copy it out um, so this voxel right here has two points that uh, share the same edge and if I would check the whole library, I can see that element type 2 actually has that condition, right? So I can use element type 2 on that particular voxel. The only difference is that, of course, it needs to be... <clears throat> it needs to be moved in place. So rotated and moved in place, like that. So now I can just move it like so and then repeat the same thing like mirror what script is going to do it's going to like um, investigate or, or check every uh, voxel in the, uh, separately um, and will it will just place a rotated and mirrored version of um, an element type that works we did it manually right now so in this example, you can see that there is a lot of rotating and movement in the world, and we need to have all the possibilities of how these um, how these elements can rotate and, 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 and mirror without any duplicates. So while we have a single element and uh, sorry, a single point element and two point element, it's it's quite easy to kind of understand. Well, even with two point element, right? It, it's kind of easy to look at it this way, but keep in mind that it can also be something like this. It's still a viable option, right? So, so there is a lot of like, rotation and mirroring involved. <clears throat> so what we need to do is with this library, we still need to revisit it in Grasshopper and construct all of the possible rotation and mirroring permutations. Um, I'm not sure if I'm using the word, cor word uh, permutation correctly. I hope I do. Um, <clears throat> all possible possibilities, like of how you can mirror and um, uh, rotate the elements, without having still without having any duplicates, right? Because duplicates, they, they, it would work with duplicates as well. Uh, the, the script is just, it would take too long to calculate. It would become really, really slow. Um, so I already have a script prepared here. This is going to be like my note uh, 
notepad where I'm going to check what I need to show you. Um, and we're just going to rebuild the script, uh, script from scratch. So, um, first of all, I, this whole script, I, I just placed it in a, a single cluster, um, just for, for compact purposes. And also it's, it's going to be quite easy for me to understand what kind of outputs I need and remember what kind of outputs and inputs I need. Um, so in this script, what we'll need is three inputs, four outputs, right? First input is cage curve. Um, if I were to, which one should we try? Let's try type two. Cage curve is going to be series of curves. Select multiple. And it's going to be, oh, maybe it's easier if we have them pre-selected and just set multiple curves. Um, it's going to be that uh, surrounding bounding box of our element. Then we have guide points. It's these two points right here. Right? These are our guides according to which, according to which uh, everything else is um, like generated here. Um, the, this uh, surface right here is generated according to those points, and uh, all of the possible um, duplicates are uh, evaluated and removed according to if if these two points match up within permutations. So. Set multiple points, both of these get set. I connect them here. And last one, we have geometry. So that's just geometry node. Set one geometry, and that's going to be our element, right? Right now I'm using just the default ones, um, not even the fancy ones. Uh, this is just to, uh, for, for experimentation purposes, it's, it's fine. Later on, we can just substitute the geometry uh, input with anything we want. Okay, and now we have th three or four different outputs. Um, let me just show you. Okay, so the bounding box curve. Okay, I'll just connect it like so. Hmm. So it generates a bunch of boxes for me downwards. Okay, that's fine. Uh, guide point. Okay, so that's going to be point component. Okay, so these guide points that I've input here, they get rotated and aligned in these boxes in, in, in different ways. Right, so, so it generates all possible variations of these points. Hopefully without any... Um, yeah, I don't think there's... Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's um, there are any duplicates here. Maybe there is. Uh, if there are duplicates here, um, that's okay as long as we don't have uh, 256 of these boxes because that's how many are generated. <clears throat> then we have rules, which I'll, I'll I'll talk about in a bit, but it's basically uh, let me just grab a panel this, in this case. It's basically according to the box, let's say, uh, let's go for that's box zero. Let's, let's go for box one, right? So according to bo uh, the box, every point on the box has its own um, index, right? So let's say this is point zero, that's point one, that's point two, that's point three, um, and, and so on, right? Um, so in this case, the, the, the rules, 0 or 1, is, is basically on the box, which points are used within the, on the voxel edges, which points are used um, and which points are empty, right? So um, I assume it starts counting from here. Uh, so 0 and 1 are empty, while 2 and 3, this one and this one are used. So they return true and all the top ones are empty, so they return false. Uh, we will need these rules later on once we actually use um, this cluster uh, as our um, within our marching cubes algorithm. For now, I'll just let them be. 
Um, and then geometry and origin. So the output of it is geometry, blank geometry. So you can see here that it's actually, well, if I check with a panel, it's actually a group with uh, two objects. If I were to uh, ungroup, ungroup these, I would see that it's always um, a point and a surface, right? So this particular point right here, it's not uh, those two guiding points that are key, uh, being rotated. It's actually a point that's um, on the first, it's, it's the first point of all the corners of the box, right? Uh, that particular point is going to be used, like this one, and this one, and so on. Um, those particular points are going to be used for simple move operations during the marching cubes algorithm. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that uh, later. But that's basically what we need. Okay, so now we can move on to actually creating the, oh, come on, to actually creating the, um, the script by ourselves. Okay, so three inputs, curve, point, geometry. Okay, that's easy enough. CRV, I just create an empty curve com uh, component and I'll just uh, select my cage here. Set multiple curves, all of them get set and I'll right click on the component and I'll just call this uh, cage uh, curves or cage CRV. Now I need uh, a point component. Select these two points. Set multiple. And I'll call them guiding PT. PTs, guiding points. And last one is going to be my um, surface right here. Uh, so that's going to be um, tile or element. Element geo element geometry whoops <laughs> okay let me just create a geometry uh, node first and then name it element geo there we go i set one geometry and now everything is set here um actually i'm i'm, I'm going to hide all of this so that it's not in the way because i'll be i'll be working with this box right here only with this element for now. Okay, so we have these three inputs done. So the first thing to do is, um, I, I want to kind of prepare it. I know for a fact that I'm going to um, rotate and mirror my element geometry together with my guiding points. So these two will be rotated together and um, to make it work, I will, I will be using groups a lot within this definition. Um, since right now we only have a single surface here, but you might have a, a type of a voxel which will have like five surfaces, right? So I will be, even though this is a single surface, I will still be grouping, grouping my element geometry and also I'll be grouping my guiding points right so now we have two groups here and I'll be merging them into a single list if I were to check it with my uh, with a panel I can see I have um, as my um, first item of the list I have my guiding points which are grouped and my second item of the list is my geometry which is also grouped. Okay, so that works. Um, so we're here. And actually, yeah, um, as I can see here, I'm also grouping the output of the list into a single, um, single group, right? So this is just so that when I rotate things and so on, everything rotates together uh, without any 
um, without any issues and I'm um, when I check something with um, a panel it's much easier for me to just uh, see you know um, less items and I don't need to deal with data tree structures as much as well okay so we have that I'll just make a quick group out of this um, the next thing is to start like we will be mirroring these right so the next thing is uh, to, to, to start creating like rotation planes and mirror planes uh, within this box right um, so the first thing to do is create a bounding box oh bounding <laughs> bounding box just create a bounding box around this uh, around this cage curve uh, input and here you can see um, the the bounding box is not created it's because uh, for every curve it creates a separate bounding box right uh, because it's set to be per object and I, here I have like eight curves one two three four five six seven eight 12 curves so I'll just instead of using per object mode I'll right click on the bounding box component and choose union box so now it's a regular you know box uh, which contains all of these uh, curves okay uh, that works and now if we think about it as long as we have three planes right at the center of our bounding box we can use those three planes for rotation purposes we can use those three planes for um, mirror purposes and so on right so so it it, it kind of works uh, which means we need a center point of this box and I can do uh, I can get the center point by just um, ex extracting evaluating evaluate box by just evaluating the box right yes um, by just evaluating the box and it, by default it the evaluation parameters are set to 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 right so I don't need to do anything else with it right I, it already works uh, quite 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 well um, if it's 0 0.5 in UV and W it means it's right in the middle of the box so I have a point here, point output here, right? And that's the one that we're going to be using. Um, on that point, I want to create three planes for possible rotations, right? X, Y plane, Y, Z plane, and Y, X, or X, uh, sorry, X, Y and Y, X is the same thing. Um, XZ plane right these three planes and I'll just connect it like so so I, so we have like this thing set up here we have three planes um, created now I'll just hide everything else and you can see it here right. okay um, now it's time to uh, start rotating things around um, the thing is that we don't really need to uh, for, for um, checking after rotation and after mirroring we will need to check for duplicates and remove the duplicates um, in this case it doesn't make sense to rotate and mirror our geometry this one it doesn't make any sense to rotate and mirror the geometry um, and then check for duplicates if we can just do it with the two points here because uh, it's going to be computation wise it's going to be much faster to first rotate and mirror these two points to all possible variations of how these two points can be um, like anchored to the corners of the box and later on once we remove uh, remove the duplicates then um, attach the transformation information to this element geometry right it's, it's just going to make it much faster 
So um, instead of using um, this group for, for rotation, I'll be using these points here, just these points. Um, we have three planes. Let's start ro the rotation of them. Just get some space here. Rotate 3D. No, it's not rotate 3D. It's just a regular rotate. Rotate an object around the center point and an axis vector. That's perfect. Rotate. Asks us for three things. Am I, am I using that? Yes, I am. That's great. Asks us for three things. First one is what's the geometry that we're rotating? Again, we're not rotating the element. We're just rotating the points. Let me create a point container here just to make it a bit cleaner. I'll just move it. It's already crossing paths with other lines. That's not a good thing, but let's see something like that. I'll just connect it here, right? Oh, also before I connect it, there's one more thing. Here I have only two, uh, sorry, not only two, but more than one uh, point, the these two. Uh, so I need them to be rotated as a, you know, as a group. So I'll, I, I will be grouping them before I rotate them like that. Okay, so we have that going on. Uh, the next one is angle and it's angle in radians. Uh, I don't like radians, so we change this. We right click on the A input of rotate and we change it to degrees right here. So now it's angle in degrees. And we'll come back to the angle in a bit. Um, before we do that, let's check out the rotation plane. So by default, it's set to world um, XY. And it's different from this XY plane because this one is not on world 0, 0, 0 coordinates, right? It's right in the middle of our box. While the default one, the world XY is at 0, 0, 0 coordinates. So instead of using that uh, world XY, we'll be using uh, this one, this plane right here, like that. Okay. And now for the angle. So let me just quickly show you what it's going to do. And let me hide other two planes so that it's easier to, even easier to see. Let me create a slider 0 to 360. Just connect it here. If I move the slider, you can see the, the, the points are rotating, right? And the important uh, angles are, of course, 0. Oh, that was loud. Um, 0, 90, 180, and 270. Of course, right? Everything in between doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, they don't align with the corners of the box. So I'll be creating a panel. And I'll just, in the panel, I'll write 0, 90, 180, 270 degrees, right? Um, if I were to connect it right now, like that, rotate node uh, is going to turn red. And that's because, hmm, where do I, let me just have it here. Uh, rotate node is going to turn red. If I click on it, it's going to say data conversion field from text to number, meaning that it reads this as text rather than number, numbers. That's because this is like a multi-line, like I'm using more than one line but I'm not specifying that it's going to be uh, um, a list of things, right? So to make it uh, a list of things, like with four items in the list, I need to right click on the panel and click on multi-line data. And now we can see each line is treated like an item in the list. And suddenly, since each line has a number, it reads it as numbers. So now this works. Um, that's great let me just check if i'm missing anything no i'm not that's perfect let's move on so we have uh, we have rotated our stuff our geometry um four times right if i grab a panel you can see we have four 
uh, groups of points. Right? That's because we're using four values here. Um, I want these groups of points to be well. Actually, let let's keep keep rotating it in on other axes, and then I'll explain uh, why we'll need to graph this. So again, rotate. This time we rotate the rotated, already rotated four uh, versions of these. We again use degrees. We plug in the degrees here. But this time the plane, we choose a different plane. This time we use YZ plane and rotate it there. Like that. And it's hard to tell, uh, you know, what what's happening it's just or actually what if I al always show you the slider 360 you can see here right it, it rotates around the other plane right but the, the issue is that here we have four objects and each of these objects I, I want to rotate um, each of these uh, four objects four times, right? To have four possible variations for each one of these objects, meaning that I should, um, by the end of this, I should have uh, 16 objects. But what I get here, well, of course, now I get four, but if I connect four numbers here, I'm still left with four objects. And that's because Grasshopper is... Um, the, the way Grasper works is since we have four inputs here for, from coming from this rotate and we, we have four inputs coming from this um, angle panel, uh, it's going to say, okay, first input is going to receive zero degrees, second input is going to receive a uh, second group of objects, is going to receive 90 degrees, third is 180, and last one is 270, right? So it's not multiplying. But... If we right click and graft our um, output of the first rotate, you can see, and actually not just graft, let's uh, sim use simplify on it. <coughs> simplify just, um, you can see here, uh, without simplify, we have extra zero in the address of the tree branch. Um, data tree branches. If I simplify it, it just removes that extra zero. That's all it does, just to keep things tidy and make sure that all the data streams align. Uh, so once I have it grafted, all of these are moved um, into separate data branches, meaning that they are separate. You can think of it as separate lists, right? With one, only one group in each list. And those separate lists suddenly receive four values, meaning that each group gets rotated four times, right, with four different values. So suddenly here we have 16 groups. Okay, that's good. We need to continue. So now I will just do, do it again. So this one needs to be, of course, grafted again and uh, simplified. Oh, and actually, maybe this will make it clear. clear. So after, um, so before rotation, the data, the data tree looks like this. This is before rotating. After rotating with four values and grafting it, the data tree looks like this. There is one element in each branch. After rotating and grafting what we already had rotated and grafted, only on a different plane, the data tree starts looking like this, right? So we keep branching out. This branches out into four branches. These four branches are one, two, three, four. They branch out into four more branches. And we want, um, each of these branches to branch out even f further, right? So that's why we are going to simplify and graft 
this output again and use the last plane for rotate, right click, degrees, connect and that's the plane that we're going to use and that's the angle that we're going to use. Eh, trying to make it tidy, as tidy as possible. Okay, um, so now what we have, uh, let me double check if I'm doing everything correctly. Yeah, I seem so. Uh, it seems to be okay. Okay. Um, so now what we have here, and uh, I'll just graph and uh, simplify this, check the data tree. We have 64 branches, right? 4, 16, 64. We have 64 branches and rotation wise it's all possible variations of how this element can be rotated. And honestly it's it, uh, for me it's pretty hard to think about it. Um, you know how, how the heck do you get all possible permutations of the element? Um, so I just do it a very brute force way you know by rotating and later on just mirroring it again uh, as well. Um, there might be some sort of a different solution to this. If you know a different solution to getting all possible variations, uh, let me know. Would be really grateful. But this this method works, so it's fine. So now I have 64 variations of, of how you can rotate all of this. And as you can already probably tell, most of these are going to be duplicates, right? We will need to, to, to take care of that part. But we have this uh, working, delete, um, but this is not enough. Uh, there's also po uh, possible variations where, um, how do I explain it? Let's say this point is calculated first and this point is calculated second, right? And it doesn't matter how much you rotate it around. It's always going to still be point that's calculated first and point that's calculated second. Unless, so index 0, index 1, unless you have it mirrored, meaning that then this is going to be point index 0, point index 1. And it's quite an important thing. Uh, not just that, it also skips a few uh, variations with just rotation, so we need to mirror as well. I'll just use a simple mirror for it. Um, geometry that I'm mirroring is everything that was rotated, so 64 different variations of rotation. Let me... No, I don't want to hide that, but I want to hide that. So uh, 64 different variations of, of, of rotation get mirrored, and since all of them are in separate branches, and I can check with a panel, yeah, every single group is in a branch of its own, I can use these three planes, like mirror planes, to get, is it three? One, two, three, yeah. Um, to, I can use these three mirror planes to get all possible mirroring uh, variations of all possible rotation variations. So I'm just like increasing the amount of um, possible placement of these points like crazy. But it's better to have more and then remove it than to have not enough. Uh, especially once we'll start using the algorithm, marching cubes algorithm. So, um, single element in each branch comes in here. Three planes need to come in here. So I'll just use merge. Or maybe I don't even need to use merge. I'll just, holding down the shift key, I'll connect all three of these to the mirror plane input here. So what I get from it is three groups with um, per each branch and each of these groups is, are mirrored uh, um, three times. S sorry, it, it, within each branch uh, 
the element gets mirrored three times. Okay, so that 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 works. Um, the the thing is that this is a mirrored uh, like ev even the uh, index zero is a mirrored version um, of what we have here. We do need to to have the original um, to within this list as well, right? So actually, we need um, unmirrored version at the start of each list, right? From from here, uh, th these guys here. Uh, so we need to merge, merge in this with this. Okay, so now in this output here, we have every single possible variation of these points. Okay. Moving on. <clears throat> Why does that get flattened? Yeah, we'll figure it out later. Okay. Um, so now there is this big block here, which I'm not sure which one to use first. Um, which one to show you first? Perhaps we can. Um, okay, let's do it this way. So now um, I want to separate all of these into um, in, in, into separate branches again. So I'll just graft again. So now I have one group per each data branch. I will ungroup them. Like that. So I have two points. And I'll use the tool that's called points to or yeah, points to numbers. All it does is um it just gives me these these um coordinates of the points right so same thing as here points to numbers and now I'm, I'm, I'm going to um, work with those numbers as as if it was a set right so Basically, how, how how can you tell that two number uh, two points are um, um, overlapping, like a set of two points and another set of two points are overlapping, and then use that uh, information as a mask for uh, removing some elements from um, some some a, a other list. Uh, well, first of all. When, when you have something like this going on, you do you join join it all up. <sighs> Text join. Join it all up. So you uh, from from separate list items, you get just a single line of you know text. And then the thing that you need to check is whether or not that text matches up with any other line of text here right so you need to create um, let me delete that create a panel here like that so um, you need to create a set and you need to uh, find similar uh, neighbors within that set. So what I mean by that is, um, let's just create a set of, let me just create a panel first and let's say 5, 8, 11, um, 23, 5, 9, 11, 8, something like that. You know, just series of numbers, nothing more. If I create a set, Create set of these. 
what I get is shorter list of these numbers without any duplicates. So 5, 8, 11, 23, 5 was a repetition so it got removed, 9, 11, 8, 11 and 8 were also repetitions, they got removed and I get a mask here which is 0, 1, 2, 3, and then uh, 5 was a repetition of 5 here, so it receives a mask of 0, right? And then, and, and so on and so, so forth. So if I create a set for these numbers here, nothing really will change because we have everything exploded, right? Um, that's a very bad word, not, not, not exploded. Uh, we have everything separated into separate branches. So I need to flatten it out to make a set. Or actually maybe I should, yeah, I'll, I'll flatten it out here like that. And now you can see that um, before when we joined everything, we had 256 possible permutations, right? Why is it 256? Yeah, that's true. 192, 64, yeah, 256. Um, and here, after we created a set, we only get 24, right? Which means that uh, a lot have, uh, of, of stuff has been removed. So uh, what I want to do then is use what's called find similar, and it's under sets, find similar member, right? And data to search for. Uh, let me double check. Yeah. Okay. Um, so data to search for is data from our set and similar uh, or, or, or set to search is our like large uh, list of, 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 of let's see let's call this like point I don't know numbering or, or coordinate list something like that. Uh, so, so this is our large list. This is the one without the duplicates. So we take the list without the duplicates and for every item on that list, we find the sim similar members here. So what we end up with is these indices here. And these indices can be used to extract as long as we're using the same method of mirroring uh, of rotating and then mirroring to extract anything um, that would get rotated and mirrored together. Um, the problem is if we just do the same thing for uh, our geometry, you know, rotate and mirror for our geometry, um, then we would end up with, you know, having the same um, trouble, uh, having the same really heavy definition. So instead of doing that, uh, we will be working with what's called um, transformation data, right? Because for every rotation and mirroring, we have this X output, which is transformation data. And what we can do is we can treat this as a, well, generate a list, which corresponds to um, the, the geometry data that gets multiplied constantly. So we can uh, generate a, a, a list of how many were there? 256 transformation datas that were used to uh, generate these 256 variations of points and then just remove all of the unnecessary ones, right? And just leave the 24 that are actually useful. So we're going to do that uh, in a bit. I'm just going to... Okay, so now we're going to deal with uh, the transforms, the transformation information as if um, 
basically generate a list of 256 transforms used to you know to, to create these um, all, all, all possible point uh, rotation uh, variations so uh, to do that here I can see group with two objects is created and four <clears throat> four rotations are used right so for the first one it's as easy as as simple as just grafting it and actually I'll use simplify for this one as well just grafting it and now we have everything that matches up right um, this group was created by just not rotating <laughs> This group was created by uh, rotating it uh, 90 degrees and, and, and so on, right? So let me just actually use a transform, transform node here. This is an empty transform container and I'll just place it here, like j j just connect it like so. Um, let me just double check if I'm not missing anything. No, that 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 was fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now uh, here, if I were to check here, see how here uh, you have um, four. Um, four rotations constantly uh, being repeated four times and uh, of course if I were to check check it out here you could see that I have 16 um, groups if I were to graft and simplify this part they would match up right so again this was used to generate this group but actually in, in, in truth it, it wasn't just this it was the previous rotation as well right so what I need to do is I need to oh, delete the wrong one eh, come on delete um, I need to merge the first transform with the second transform um, and the problem that I immediately see is that first of all data trees don't match if I have this grafted right second of all the amount doesn't match so uh, let me unsimplify and ungraft this this version here so now the data trees match up right zero zero one one two two three three but here I have only um, uh, four rotations or four transforms while here I have 16 meaning that um, each of these transforms like let's say in branch 0 they're achieved by uh, first using this transform here right so I need to repeat this uh, each one of these transforms four times I can do that by just simply using repeat data or data tool and repeating four times that's just a simple panel with four in it so now after repetition if I check this is what I get All right absolutely same thing being repeated but uh, it, it's basically these two uh, transforms that give me uh, the first 16 variations okay uh, so now I need to merge them somehow Right, I have this repetition and I, I have, let me just extract it like so. I call it transform two. That's going to be transform one. Yeah. Um, so I have this and I have this. Right, these two. And these need to be merged. Um, there's no real way on how to actually let me just double check if if I need to do anything else with it all right 
yeah apologies <clears throat> if I were to just use merge right now the problem that I would see is that come on is that here I have uh, like nonsensical data structure first of all it's as if two data trees were well, cannot see here but as if two data trees were um, placed on on each other and it's actually kind of true uh, so first of all I'll just simplify and simplify the inputs of merge and now you can see that I uh, after merge I have eight values here and I can't really tell which one is which well right it, it's kind of hard to, to say uh, so so I need to clean it up right and the way I clean it up is let me just connect transform to this again come on disconnect connect transform to I have these two transforms right and I want um, a data structure with two items in each data branch and here I have more than you know I, I want this item like this item right here to be paired with this item right here because that's how they are actually being paired as it's being rotated uh, so to do that I can just simply graft the repetition output so everything is in a separate list and I can graft the transform um, to so that everything is in a separate list here right or in a separate branch data branch now if I check uh, things get paired up <coughs> properly and now I just need to uh, make um, uh, what's called a compound um, how do you call it um, a compound transformation from them so if I go in the top if I go to transform tab I go to mm, utilities I can use compound right so the output that I get is compound transformation made out of two transforms okay good um, hard part done so that's after this rotation right I need to do it two more times for this rotation and this mirror um, so let me just double check again Mm -hmm. yeah it's the same thing if I were to check this uh, rotation um, output transform output here I have 64 values right and here I only have 16 compounds right so that, that means um, that each one of these compounds needs to be uh, repeated four times to fit with 64 values here so I just use repeat the data again connect it and the length of how how much of a data how many times I repeat the data is also four um, so now what I get is and actually let me just create transform tra transform Nope. Um, transform empty component. Connect, connect it like so. Um, do we graft it? Yes, we do. We graft it. I'll call this transform three. Let's keep checking this one out. Right. Every every transform is in a separate branch. And if I were to check the data tree, it looks something familiar. Right. Something similar to this data tree here right so both of these match up that's perfect for us and also the problem that we have here is that this data tree doesn't have enough branches right that's because we still have four compounds in each data branch and here everything is separated into separate branches so again to fix this all we need to do is graft suddenly these two data trees look really similar 
and that's because everything here was like 16 compounds were repeated four times for each compound and they got graf grafted so that it matches with the transform of the third rotation so i'll just use merge again merge these two up come on merge minimize oops not graft sorry just to be sure i'll, I'll simplify i'll connect it and here you can see I have rotation and I have compound transformation, right? So I can make another compound like that. So now I have compound transformation made out of three transforms and it's these three rotations, right? So all possible rotation values. I need to do the same thing again for, um, for for the mirror, but at this point we kind of know what to do. We take all of these, right? The, 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 um, let me move this slightly down so that it visually you can see a difference between them. So the mirror here we also use transform, connect it, we will need to graft it, we will need to call it transform4. Right. I'll just place it somewhere here. This uh, compound will need to be repeated. But this time, um, it, it, it's going to be a bit different because we are just using three inputs for mirror and not four. And let me just double check if I messed up or not. Wait, what's going on here? Mm, ta -ta -ta, mirror... Mm -hmm. Oh, and actually here I believe I made a mistake because here it, it gets repeated four times while I'm only mirroring um, with three planes. Okay. Uh, so, so I'll need to fix that, that, that part there as well. But here... Um, we have three planes for mirroring, meaning that for every uh, rotated uh, version of geometry, we generate three here, meaning we generate three um, transforms, transformation tools, uh, meaning we need to repeat this part three times these compounds three times rather than four and then everything besides that is, is the same uh, repetition gets grafted so everything gets separated now we have pairs here which we need to merge into a single list if we merge them we check with the panel here oh uh, okay uh, simplify simplify so everything gets gets uh, merged here and then all we need to do is just um, compound create a compound out of these okay so um, the thing uh, the very important thing here is that mirror and rotate were merged into one list and that is a very important thing to do. So here, um, we, we, we have this kind of a compound. Apologies. We have this um, combo, compound output here. That's after mirroring. And this is before mirroring. We need to repeat uh, the same thing. Merge this with this. And I really hope that the data tree will look okay. I didn't follow through. Oh, it's actually a little bit broken, but we do have 256 branches, which is good. What if we just simply 
simplified no that's not enough we do need to take care of it a little bit let me check how i solved it here oh everything gets flattened here okay so we don't even need to take care of the data tree anymore we can just flatten everything like so mm, i don't trust it I will be doing it this way though. Um, let me check. Mm -hmm. Okay, all we need to do is trim tree. So we're left with something like this. And if we connect the trimmed version of the tree here and check it out now. Now this is all good. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. And now it's it's just cleaning cleaning up, right? At at this point, we do have uh, the whole logic done. Okay. So moving on, um, just so that it's a bit more clear, <clears throat> I will move these components to the side. The checking for or actually I can even group them up like that. Um, so th this whole part here just checks for um, duplicates and removes the ones that are um, unnecessary, right? So it just keeps the unique, uh, unique point pairs. <clears throat> um, so this merge right here, 256 pairs of points together with this merge right here 256 um, transforms are basically two lists who uh, which which are uh, the same uh, so so you have 256 pairs that were achieved by using these 256 compound transforms um, one thing though is that here you can see all of them are in separate branches while here it's not grafted the output of the merge here is not grafted so all of these are <clears throat> four components compound uh, transforms sorry in every uh, branch so if i graft this now these two are ident identical so now moving on delete um, as I was checking the, 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 the for for duplicates um, here I had to flatten the list which is fine that means I, I will need to flatten this one out um, actually we can do it this way uh, transform like that and flatten right so we have 256 transforms and here out of our uh, find similar members we have I, I believe it's 24 yes we have 24 indices of unique items right so that means we can use those uh, 24 indices to just extract the unique transforms from this list of 256. I can do that by using list item tool and my list is the transforms and the indexes are the ones which I get from find similar members here. So I end up with having these kind of uh, 24 compound transformations so the tricky bit is done now it's it's just the matter of uh, assembling everything and, and and using these transforms to actually rotate and then mirror and so on our uh, uh, our, our elements so let me um, just so that everything is clean let me group this bit like so. So that's our, uh, I'll color it 
green and my rotations hmm, do I need no I don't need that <clears throat> my rotations are here and I'll color, color this uh, let's see yellow this is just to make it clear clear um, so I have this group right here which is my um, my tile my element and two points I can <clears throat> to be able to um, use these unique compound transformations on my element I need to use a tool that's called transform Keep in mind that there is an empty component called transform, but there is also a tool that's called transform, which asks me for geometry and asks me for transformation that should be applied to that geometry. So I connect my tile together with the two guiding points, the group of them. I connect that to my transform and for my right here and for my um, Transformation, I use the unique compound transform transformations here. So, uh, I mean, everything is in the same place right now, so it's a bit messy, but you can see here that um, I get uh, 24 groups, and each one of these groups has a um, unique placement of two guiding points and also corresponding tile for those particular two guiding points. Let me hide, hide some things. Okay, so we're, we're here. Um, the next thing to do is to actually move, like I, I want to visually see each variation of it to just check if the remove duplicates uh, this, this guy if, if it works or not uh, so what I want to do is I want to just move them downwards um, I am um, I'll be able to do that if I how did I do it here oh right right okay um, so I have a bounding box which is right here right that's just my bounding box and actually let me just create a box component and move it somewhere here right so I have my bounding box and what I want to do is I want to measure the height I know for a fact that it's 10 units but I want to keep it parametric so I'll just measure the height uh, uh, within grasshopper so I'll use evaluate box tool like that and here I'll uh, I'll specify the coordinates for evaluation which should be 0 0 0 which means it's going to make a point here right that's like local X Y Z for the box so everything is 0 0 0 I'll just co copy this component and here instead of 0 for the, v, the W, which is Z, uh, Z uh, local Z, I will use 1. So in like local X and Y, U and V, it gives me the same coordinate, but in Z it moves it all uh, like right to the top of my box. So I have these two points. And then all I need to do is just measure the distance, I believe. Yes. So I'll just measure the distance between them like that, multiply it by, let's say 1.5, so 150%, uh, maybe let's do it this way like that. And now I have a value of how, by how much will I need to move each uh, version of, of, of this particular tile, right? All 24 of them. 
So now I'll need to, well, I'll, I'll need to move them, right? So move, the transform gets moved and it will get moved um, in Z, right? And each tile will need to be moved uh, by this number, which is, it's going to be 15. Eh, come on, 15, right? So I'll, let me just create a number component here. Like that, and I'll just drag it all the way to my uh, right hand side. <clears throat> so I have 15, right? And I have, uh, 24 elements and each of them like the first one needs to be moved 0 next one 15 third one uh, 30 45 60 and so on um, So I need series of numbers, right? So a series So as you can see series just generates a list of numbers and it has three inputs the first one is What's the number with which we start so it's zero by default? That's fine for us. Next one is the step, step size. And the step size is exactly, you know, how, how much do we move each iteration? So that's going to be 15. And count is how many elements are we moving? How many numbers do we need to use for movement? So I'll just measure a list length like that and connect it to count here. So that's like the height for each of my uh, values. If I connect it now like this, I can see all variations of my tile. Right? And it's kind of hard to tell where it is exactly in the box, so I'll, I'll move it. Um, there should be another movement, right? Yeah. So uh, I'll move the frame as well. Uh, so I'll just create another move. And my frame is going to be cage curves. Let me, uh, let me just group, Gr group. my cage curves, uh, drag them all the way to the right and I'll be moving my grouped cage curves by the same value, like that. So they go up, well in this case we, let, let, let's keep it up. Uh, in, in my previous example, uh, which is here, I'm also moving it down, so I have a negative here, but it's fine. Let, let's have it move, moving up. Okay, um, so now just taking a quick look at it. Oh yeah, here you can see a duplicate, and that's because the first uh, variation here in the transform is not the same as the input that we gave it, and that's absolutely fine. I'll just hide this all. And now it's 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 okay. So that 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 then side ones. For instance, these two, they seem like they're uh, the same, but it's actually um, a flipped version. This is a flipped version of this one, and it also applies to to others as well, right? So so flipped versions uh, where Let's see, this is point 0.1, point 0.2, while here, well, which one was it? Looking down, while here, if the previous one was point 0.1, point 0.2, then maybe, not maybe, but it's actually this one is point 0.1 and this one is point 0.2, so it's uh, like a flipped version. It's important to have that information also uh, here. So we end up with more variations, but um, it's going to be a bit cleaner setting up the, the further process. Okay, so we have this done. 
What am I doing with those? Box corners, wires, mm -hmm -hmm. and group. Okay. That's going to be easy enough to do. Let me just double check if I'm uh, missing something. No, that's fine. That's okay. That is fine. Okay, so we're only left with uh, this portion right here. Um, the first one is getting the, uh, the, the the outputs, right? So, so the first output that we get is the bounding box wireframe curves. Okay, uh, so it's it's these curves right here, and it's uh, yeah, we we do have them. So all I need to do is just create a curve component. Oh, oh that's a group. Um, let me ungroup. And I'll plug this into the curve component. Like that. And I'll just call this uh, bounding box curves. Okay. The next thing to do is to create a gu guiding point output. All right. So these like pairs of two points. Okay. And that's also uh, quite simple to do. Here, uh, where is it? <clears throat> Here, after movement, I have uh, a bunch of groups with two objects. If I use ungroup on them, I'll get <clears throat> a data tree, list of lists of uh, two objects in each branch. And if I check the data tree, it's going to be actually two groups. Uh, right? Uh, so let me use list item on it and if I zoom into the list item I can increase the number of outputs so this is the first item of the list group with two objects while this is the second one group with one object right so I'll ungroup them individually ungroup Ungroup that. So here I can see that I have two points for, for, for each uh, data branch. Let me start hiding some things which are getting in the way. Um, so here uh, I have two um, points for each branch, meaning that these are the points that I'm getting. And let me just simplify the output, right? 24 branches one point or, or two points in each branch and here if I check what kind of out output I get here it's going to be the same 24 branches two points in each branch meaning that this is a suitable output for us um, I'll call this I'll create a point container point nope again point container and I'll call it guide pts guide points okay so we have two outputs here third one is a bit more tricky rules zero or one okay so the, the now i will need to explain the rules so the the way these points are arranged on the box. Uh, we we still haven't like this decided on how will these be translated to um, how will Grasshopper check where these two points are exactly on the box. And there are many different ways on how to do it. The one that I find, as long as we're within the voxel grid, as long as everything is according to x, y, and z coordinates or directions. Um, the easiest way um, I find uh, is by just, uh, first of all, creating a <clears throat> bounding box where we have our uh, 
bounding box curves ungrouped this one and instead of per object again we use union box since these are in separate branches uh, a bunch of boxes are created for each branch and then I will deconstruct deconstruct uh, the box no wait no sorry I'll use box corners box corners so this will give me corner A B C D blah blah, blah. right S separated and I'll rejoin them with uh, just uh, merge a simple merge I'll just rejoin them into a single list again as long as it's uh, as long as our boxes are following the X Y and Z directions and they're not rotated in a weird way this works fine so we don't need to be fancy about it <clears throat> so we get eight points for each box and you can see uh, yeah, if I hover my mouse you can see here uh, a bunch of like 24 um, branches and eight points in each branch I'll just simplify the output here just to make sure that it's clean okay uh, so now we need uh, those true and false statements right is in the first branch right is uh, box corner a or box corner which has index 0 does that one have a point on top of it yes or no box corner 2 does that one have a point on top of it yes or no and so on and um, eight box corners will check whether or not they have a point on top of them and they will return uh, true and false statements uh, if they do or don't I can also do this point list to just maybe um, explain it a bit better there we go zero one two three so um, the answer that I want to get for the first branch or for the first instance is false 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 true true false false right um, to check <clears throat> sorry to check for that um, all I need to do is just ask for closest points Mm, wait, do I graft something? No, I don't even need to gra graft anything. Right, so so I ask for closest point. So each point, each corner point of this box, point 0, point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3 and so on, will search for closest points within the same... Uh, tree branch of course data tree branch they will search for the closest uh, sorry for the closest point uh, within these pairs right so what I get from it is a bunch of distances right so right now we're only interested I, I'm just checking the first uh, the first element right or the first version of the element so what I get is um, from these eight corner points as it's measuring the distances to these two the closest distances distances the closest distance that it gets for point zero is of course to point that is right here and it's 10 units right uh, for point one, it's five units. Uh, sorry, for point one, it's a uh, point right here, and it's ten units as well. And you can see it here. For point two, it's even worse because it's diagonal, right? So this is the closest one, closest distance. So it gets um, fourteen and 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 a bit, and, and so on. And point four and point five, these two corner points, they have distance of zero meaning that they do have within this group uh, there are points on top of the box corners at corner 4 and corner 5 so we just need to ask 
Mm, well, honestly, the, the way I would do it, uh, the, the way I did it before was just ask if it's equal. Is the distance equal to zero, right? And it just gives us uh, zero, no, one, no, two, no, three, no, four, five, yes, yes, six, no, seven, no. Right. So it gives us the correct answer. But the problem that I've seen is that with due to probably due to tolerances of the units. Right. If if I check the units, due to this uh, to this absolute tolerance, it sometimes doesn't uh, doesn't register this as true. So what I do instead is I ask: Is it smaller? Smaller than? Is the distance smaller than uh, something zero point zero one? Right. Or panel zero point zero one. It will give me the same result, of course. Uh, but with with this, I, I make sure that the tolerances don't screw me over. Um, so those are rules that we get. And I'll just call this rules. Uh, nope, I'll, I'll use a boolean um, container. Plug, plug in the check. And I'll call this uh, rules zero or one uh, you know false or true and then if i check it's always a good idea to always double check so the first one is four and five uh is true yes the second one should be zero and one true yes the third one there we go should be two and three and let's check and yeah here we can see two and three and is true so all of, all of that works. So we have the rules here, working rules here as well. And the last bit is geometry plus origin, right? So um, if I check what I have ungrouped here, it's just my surface, right? So that's the geometry part. But I also need the origin for movement. Um, because later on, once once it chooses, once the script chooses the correct uh, version of the correct tile, it's going to move it from some point uh, on this box to the point within our voxel structure, within our voxel grid. So I need to describe which point I'm gonna going to be using and if I remember correctly yeah it's going to be pretty pretty simple here we have our bounding boxes right that we extracted from our moved wireframes so um, what I need to do is I need to just evaluate Though all of those bounding boxes, I just uh, so th this and this, these two are connected, right? So I am evaluating these bounding boxes at simply zero, yes, at zero, 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 Come on. like that. So I always get this kind of a zero 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 coordinate. And once I'm going to be dealing with voxels here, I'm also going to choose um, that precise number on each of the voxel, like zero 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 coordinate on each voxel. So I, I'll make sure that I'm moving it from the correct point to the correct point. Okay, so we have our points here. Let me just create a slider, uh, not a slider, a compo. Um, empty component here for points so we have those points we have our uh, elements we don't need to see the numbering of the points anymore elements and those corner points that are always the same on each voxel um, 
I will just double check the data structures. Oh, that's a lot of zeros. Let me just simplify. Now this is clean. And let's check this one. That's also a lot of zeros. Simplify this one as well. Now this one is clean. And I will just uh, merge these two into, uh, into pairs, right? Uh, before I do that, let me double check here. Which one comes out first? Oh. Ungroup. Okay, so um, point will come in first, our origin point, and our geometry will come in second. Like that, so we have a list like so. And I want to keep everything clean, so I will group these into a single into a single group like that. Let me check if I need to. <laughs> no, I don't need to, uh, to, to flatten them. <clears throat> so we have um, 24 variations. And I'll just create a geometry component here. Like that, and I'll call this uh, guide, not guide point, but origin, origin, PT, PT, slash, tile, geo. So origin point slash tile geometry. Okay. So all of that is done. A little bit messy, but uh, seems seems to do the trick. Um, so now, um, usually when I have a, a component that's it's uh, as big as this, not a component, sorry, a, a definition that's as big as this, and I'll be using that definition multiple times on multiple different uh, tiles. Um, I, I create a cluster out of it. Keep in mind that there's no uh, undo for, for cluster creation, meaning that as uh, once you have created the cluster out of this, uh, you can't go back. Uh, so my suggestion would be to just have a copy of it somewhere, you know, somewhere here. Control C, Control V. So make a copy right here. And then to make the cluster, I will select everything that's inside except the inputs, right? So the inputs are not, not changed. Uh, sorry, the inputs are not, not selected. Then I'll just, uh, and the outputs as well. Uh, then I'll just click the scroll wheel, click on the cluster. everything gets clustered into a single component and here I can see that it's a bit uh, a bit messy at least the outputs are fine I have the rules I have the bounding box curves I have the guide points and I have the origin points so all of that is fine but for the inputs I have too many um, a few unnecessary inputs right so I'll double click I'll go into the cluster and I'll see what I can change so this one and this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, and also then this one. Okay, so here we moved. Okay, plan B. Uh, it, it's, it's a bit too much here. So let me delete. Make a copy of this again. Move it here. And now let's see. Everywhere where we have two wires coming out, it's going to make two inputs into that cluster, right? So I'm just going to make a point component here and parse it, parse the input through that. So now this will work. And cage curve, I will make a curve component here as well and reconnect everything from the cage curve 
input like that so now one input and one wire one input one wire one input one wire same for the outputs seems to be all okay I'll just group everything uh, not group but sorry cluster everything again without the inputs or the outputs cluster drag everything in place mm -hmm. like that um, and everything seems to be clean now and working usually what what I prefer to do is is to name the inputs as well cage CRV you can name the inputs by right clicking on the input and just guiding PTs and uh, uh, right clicking and just typing what you want element geo and out is rules boolean output a uh, bounding box crv mm. guide pts and origin pt plus tile geo makes the cluster a little bit bigger but at the same time easier to understand you can also right click on the name of it and change this to tile uh, variations or tile var Okay, once you have this working, then you should probably double check on different tiles. So this is for tile version two. Let me show in Rhino, show. Let's try it for tile version one. So cage curve, um, I'll, I'll select these, set multiple. And also before even we do it, since we you have a single point here, right, and you have eight corners, that means there should be uh, eight uh, variations of it, right? It's impossible to have more than eight. So if this one gives us like 12, it means our, uh, for instance, our uh, duplicate removing doesn't work. So back to here, cage curve already set, guiding points, um, I'll just select it, set multiple, or in this case it's one, but it doesn't matter. Element geometry, set one geometry, this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then it's done. Super. Means that it works. Um, and you can check with you know any amount of, of, of elements sorry not amount of elements but with any element type and just see you know if, if it works or not just make sure that you select all all of the points very important and you don't accidentally select the points from neighboring type of course ah come on i don't know and select and select and select so yeah again just make sure that this 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 and this that's correct points and all of them are selected set multiple element geometry set multiple and you can see for instance how how many variations you can get for element type 8 compared to element type 2 and especially compared to element type 1 and by the way we see element type 2 because we still have it here right so this is like our um, backup backup for the cluster if we screw something up but it seems to be working quite well so we don't need to do anything with this so um, the file that I'm going to uh, give you 
and that you can use if you get stuck is going to be in the video description and it's going to be precisely this uh, rhino and grasshopper file so here in the top you'll see the cluster working cluster and it's going to be connected to tile uh, 8 right so this guy right here while this one the, the, the big version is going to be like an exploded, let's say, version of the cluster and it's going to be working on tile version uh, 2, right? Um, actually, let me just quickly go through this. So this one, we just measure how high the box is, box height times 1.5. So nothing fancy here. Um, then here we move everything so nothing gets really well nothing gets really changed here it's everything just gets um, moved upwards as you can see here then here we have the transform which gives us all the permutations. So this is a very important one. Important. This is a very important thing in the whole definition. So I'll have it like that. Then here, bounding box, box corners, merge, closest point, smaller than. This whole thing is uh, rules creating the rules um, and then you have ungroup ungroup merge this is like um, grouping merging at etc outputs so it's it's just us working with origin points, guide points, and like grouping and merging everything into separate clean outputs. Nothing more than that. Um, let me just make this uh, something like this. Um, what's here? Bounding box. Yeah, these don't matter. And they are kind of easy to track back to what they do. Okay, so I'll have this also grouped and color it white. So, um, again, these files are going to be available for you uh, to download uh, from the uh, description of the video. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually uh, set everything up to be... Uh, we're going to set up the logic of how... Uh, grasshopper uh, is going to choose which tile to place uh, next to which point in our point cloud uh, so after that once we're done with that um, it's mostly going to be done uh, i'm going to have an additional uh, two videos one of which is going to be um, v-ray settings and um, just basically trying to, to uh, generate a bit more cartoon style renders with V-Ray. Um, and the next one is going to be extracting statistics from the marching cubes algorithm. So basically uh, trying and to count how many elements of type 1 and how many elements of type 8 were used to populate or to wrap this kind of geometry uh, with those elements, right? So how many uh, of each element you'll need to, to actually wrap this kind of geometry. Uh, but that's going to be um, later. So the next video is going to be us just finishing up uh, the overall logic and using these clusters extensively w within that uh, particular script. So, bye!